Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I thought I'd take you along as I work on a new drawing. This is actually a preliminary study for one of the Lenormand cards I'm developing. As I sketch, I'll share a bit about the creative process, my recent show, Reminiscencia, Reminiscence at Heidi Vaughn Fine Arts in Houston, and what art means to me. It's been a great experience seeing a few pieces sell at the show. But you know, a show isn't all about sales. Sure, it's great when a piece finds a home. But more than that, it's about connecting the work to people. It's about putting art out there, letting it breathe and interact in the world. This drawing is part of that same process. Part of getting ideas out and into form. And I know that blank page feeling that we all get when starting something new. That overwhelming sensation of not knowing where to begin. I mean, in Spanish, we even say agarrar al toro por los cuernos or grabbing the bull by the horns. It's like staring at a massive task that looks so, so much bigger than you are, wondering where to make that first mark. It can be overwhelming, yes, but honestly, that's the best part of it for me. The moment where all possibilities are wide open. Don't get me wrong, having a solo show and sharing the finished work with an audience is fantastic. It's like a reward after the real work. But that joy I feel in those first few strokes, that's where the excitement is born. Right here in the studio where anything can happen, where every blank panel or sketchbook is an invitation. What I find most exciting about making art is the part where anything is possible. Right at the beginning, you have those blank pages, those panels waiting to be gessoed, all those materials that are waiting for you and you just need to get the best ideas out there. You start with a few lines and suddenly there's a whole new world opening up on the page. For me, drawing is where ideas come to life. It's how I filter out the noise and let the best ones rise to the surface. You get this chance to test things out, to explore without commitment. Instead of going straight to the panel or retable and second guessing every choice, sketching lets you check the idea first. Is it good enough to paint? Will it hold up? Is it worth it? Drawing gives me that clarity, that confidence before committing to paint. And hey, if you're ever stuck, if the ideas feel stale, you can always brainstorm. Sometimes it's in the quiet solitude of your studio or with a friend over coffee. Other times, why not bounce ideas off ChatGPT? First of all, I don't think a machine is going to do the whole job for you. I found it could be like a digital studio assistant, a little like a vacuum droid for your brain. It sweeps up the dust the scattered thoughts, puts concepts in proper order, and occasionally finds you a hidden gem of an idea. Most of the time, yeah, I'll get ideas that are kind of generic or maybe not quite there. But then out of the blue, I'll get something that sparks a whole new direction. And that's the magic. I've started using it recently. I'll admit, most ideas I get from it are not great and may even be generic and cringy. But it's funny because a lot of the ideas I get from ChatGPT are very close to what I've already had in mind, which makes me wonder. Either my ideas are not that great, original, or interesting to begin with, or the machine knows me all too well and I've become incredibly predictable. Maybe a little bit of both. Either way, it pushes me, makes me re-examine reconsider, and refine my creative process. Sure, AI-generated art and ideas can sometimes feel a bit hollow, maybe even lazy. I often find AI-generated art and ideas lame, unoriginal, generic, boring, and even soulless and incomplete. But as I said, once in a while, it can surprise you. Believe me, but even with the most amazing things it can do well, I remind myself that I can do something it can't. Live a life. 
And for me, that's the secret missing ingredient. That's what makes all the difference in the world. A creative process without a real life, intention, and purpose behind it is like a ship without a compass. It has no direction, nowhere to go, doesn't have a clue. When I'm starting a new piece, I'm bringing in everything I've lived through. Every little memory, challenge, and joy. That's what keeps it grounded and what makes it human. I draw inspiration from growing up back in Puerto Rico, from the people, the nature, and the rhythm of life that was both simple and rich. For me, that's the foundation of art. Not just technique or aesthetics, but lived experiences. So when you get started on a new project, consider all the things you've been through in life. From the smallest, most mundane to the biggest challenges or happiest moments in your life. This is what makes us human. And your art needs to be informed by these things, by these experiences. My experiences through the five senses are what inspires me. You look at the painting, you look at a painting by Velázquez or Zurbarán or any of the old masters, and you see that. This is what ultimately separates us from the machine. I, for one, am inspired by all the things I can remember growing up in an analog age back in Puerto Rico. Friends, family, nature, the bittersweet moments that made me who I am today. Through dreams, memories, and art, I can step back into that world, which is uniquely mine. You can also associate a greater work of art with what you felt the first time you saw that great work. For me, it is deeply personal and close to the heart. I think back to my aunt Bertules, or Titi Sister, as we call her, who gave me my first art encyclopedia. She was a retired nun, deeply spiritual and a, a, a constant source of inspiration. She was the first to spark that fire in me to become an artist. And my mother, who as a teacher, showed me how art can educate how it can speak to the heart. My family, my friends, they're all part of what I do. I take inspiration from many sources, but I always find it more meaningful when I can tie my love for, say, mythology with the stories my big brother and sister told me when I was a child. And right now, I'm actually drawing my friend Cesar, who taught me so much in life and art. It's personal, and that's what art should be. Yes, I do love archetypes, tarot, mythology, these universal symbols that connect us across time and culture. But for me, it's about tying these universal ideas to something deeply personal. I don't, I, I don't just paint a symbol. I paint the stories and memories behind that symbol, the people and experiences that have given it meaning to me. Art is not just about creating. I think art I think of art as a homage to life. And yes, I do use a lot of esoteric material and things one might consider impersonal as it transcends into the universal archetypal realm. But for me, it is about connecting those things I love, like tarot, with people and experiences that introduced me to these things in the first place, and then draw or paint them with deeper understanding and imbue them with personal meaning. This is what art is all about, I feel. Knowing and understanding where you come from and what you love. Anyway, as I wrap up this drawing, which will be my last for this year's Inktober, it's been a little tricky juggling it with a solo show and everything else. But you know what? That's okay. I don't need to check every box or do it like everyone else. I have nothing to prove. I just draw because I love to, because it lets me connect with these stories and memories, lets me bring a little bit of myself into each piece. And this next chapter, I'm already diving into a new body of work, Mitos y Memorias, which will be part of, a, of two solo shows next year. There's a lot more to come, and I can't wait to share it all with you, but I'll leave you with this. Keep making art. Stay true to your voice and don't let anything, machines, opinions, or even your own doubts, stop you from being who you are, a creative 
so so until next time may the cosmos the archetypes and whatever you believe in gods muses angels be with you and guide your hand peace and keep creating thank you very much for sticking around till the end if you enjoy this video don't forget to like hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you don't miss out on future content also check out the video on the screen right now for more insights and inspiration your support means everything to me and helps this channel grow thanks again and i'll see you in the next one